Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how you can use your existing XML projects and simply migrate them to Jetpack Compose step by step. So that is the cool part here. You don't need to do everything at once. You can just take it fragment by fragment and simply migrate it with the interoperability techniques and functionalities Jetpack Compose actually gives us. And the same way I will show you what you can do if you actually have a Compose project with an XML view that you would like to include in that Compose project. So let's say that comes from a library. Let's say you want to include Google Maps in your Compose project. So there is no Composable yet that reflects a map. So you have to rely actually on the XML views of that. So I will also show you how you can actually use these in your Compose project as a Composable. So here, just very simple, what we will build, you can see we just have two texts here. The top text is actually a composable in form of a text view. So it is a text view, but we display it as a composable in a composable function. And the bottom one is actually an XML text view that we use in Compose. So yeah, that is what we will do here. Very simple, but you can apply this to any type of view, any type of composable, and it will work. And all I really set up here in this project is not a lot. I just have an activity and a fragment. So in this fragment, our UI will actually be located, and I set up view bindings. So nothing special, just a, the typical view binding setup. We create our bindings here, initialize it in on create view, and then return the root view of that, and finally destroy it in. Actually, that should be on destroy view. So let's quickly fix that. Um, let's just take this, move it in here. Um, yeah, so in here we just destroy our binding. And yeah, I just have the two necessary XML files for that. So we're actually ready to go. Nothing with Compose would work yet, so we don't have access to the Compose dependencies. So that is actually the first step that we want to take if we want to migrate our XML project to Compose 1. And we, in the end, do that in our build.gradle file. So let's open the build.gradle project file. And in here, what's different for Compose project is that we define our Compose version at the very top of this build script block. So we'd say, ext for extension and here we can define our compose underscore version we can set this equal to 1.0.5 so at the point where i record this video this is i think the most up-to-date version of compose so let's do that we don't want to synchronize it uh, yet instead we want to jump into our build.gradle app file because in here we also need to do some adjustments. On the one hand, you can see I already set view binding here to true in our build features block and compose is actually such a build feature as well. So all we can really do is we say compose true. So that will just tell the compiler, hey, this is a compose project and we want to use the compose functionality here. Then after this build features block, I will paste another block with some compose options these are just the options that are also automatically generated when we create a Compose project. So I recommend to also actually use these here. I think this is actually not needed anymore. So I'll leave it in, but we actually want to use a different Kotlin version. So let's jump back to our build.gradle project file. Oh, no, actually it, it did use the correct Kotlin version. So make sure you just have the Gradle plugin 1.5.31 if you use this Compose version. So back here in build.gradle app, all that's now really missing to set up Compose are just the standard dependencies for that. So I will simply paste these here. So I copied these, pasted these here. You will find these also down in this description in my GitHub repository that you will find this Gradle file. So you don't need to type this off. And now we're actually ready to synchronize this. So we click on sync now and we wait. So when we actually launch the app as it is, then all we will really see is this screen with a single text. That is a text view that comes from our XML file. No composables yet. So if we actually take a look in this XML file, all you see is, okay, we have a single text view here, nothing special. And that shows up in our fragment. However, we now actually want to have the, the option to have a composable here in our XML file. So that is what we will now work on. We can do that with the so-called compose view. So that is the interoperable view kind of if you want to use a composable in an XML project. So that really allows you to migrate your project step by step. Also, if you, yeah, in that case, rather, if you have an, a compose view, you would like to use an XML. Um, so 
what we want to do is we want to say wrap content, wrap content. We can close this off and we want to give it an ID. Um, not sure why this does not show up here. So let's write it like that. Android ID is equal to add plus ID and I'll call it compose view. Then we get an error because it does not have any constraints. So we can simply click on that here on the right side. Constrain it horizontally in parent. We can constrain it to the top. And we can then take this text view, delete the top constraint by holding control and clicking on it, selecting both views and creating a simple vertical chain. Just to center these a little bit, then we can go to the compose view and change the chain style to packed so they stick together. And we can give this text view a little margin then, so margin top of 16 dp. So that is just how I like this layout to look in the end. And this gray box here now reflects our compose view, and this can actually hold composables. So anything you have on compose can now be rendered here in an XML layout. So if we now switch back to our fragment, which is actually the fragment we just set the layout for, then at the moment, well, if we launched this, nothing would really change because we didn't really set the content for our compose view. We can do this here in our own create view function. Right after we initialized our binding, we can say binding.composeView. Now we actually have a set content function here. Let's actually first hit apply here because we want to make another change. First of all, we want to say set view composition strategy. So now we actually need to define some kind of strategy that decides about when this compose view is going to be recycled and destroyed. Because it's, yeah, in XML, we kind of do these things differently than in pure Jetpack Compose. And what we want to do is we want to say dispose on view tree lifecycle destroyed. So that just makes sure that our compose view is actually properly destroyed um, when the fragment is also destroyed or when the fragment's view is rather destroyed. And after that, we can now use set content. You already know this function if you know compose. So that now gives us a scope here, which is a composable function. So instead of this scope, we can now put any composables that we like. So if we want to have an image, then we can put an image in here and we can specify some kind of image resource or whatever. So now everything in here can be a composable. So let's just simply try that out with a simple text. We can say text is equal to hello world. And if we now relaunch our app, take a look in our emulator and wait, then you can actually see there is a hello world text and that is not an XML text anymore. That is now a text that was drawn as a composable. So that's now this text here. But since we use this compose view, it is actually interoperable. So we can use this compose view in the end in an XML layout together with our other XML components. However, how does it actually work if we have it the other way around? So we actually have an Android view, like an Android text view, and we want to use that in Compose. Well, usually you wouldn't use an Android text view in Compose because Compose already has a text composable. But as I said, you might want to include Google Maps in your app and there is no Google Maps composable. And then you can actually use the Google Maps Android view and you can use it in Compose by doing what I show you now. So I will delete this text and we will actually use this composable scope here to use an Android view in it. So this is kind of paradox here because we have this double migration, but I think it will get clear how you can do that. For that, we can actually use the so-called Android view composable. And that is used to actually use Android view as a composable. So this Android view is a composable and we need to define a so-called factory. So the factory is a Lambda function in which we define how the view that we actually want to render here should be created. So now it actually needs a reference to the view. Since we are just going to use a simple text view, we can simply create that here, just a text view. And you can see we also get access to the context here, which we usually use uh, or need to create an Android view. So we can pass it here. And then you can see the error is actually gone. So if you would have the Google Maps view again, then you would simply initialize that here, do some changes on that. If you want to do more changes, you can open another block of code here, and then you actually get a reference to this view. So we would now get our text view here, and we could say text view.apply. Oops, 
apply and do some changes like text would be for example this is an xml view in a composable we could say set text color and set it to color black for example we could say text size is let's say 20f we could say the gravity is actually gravity center so all the typical xml stuff we can use here to modify a text view can be applied and if we now rerun this then we should actually now see two texts that look pretty similar and as you can see this is now a text view rendered inside of a composable and this is a simple xml text view that comes from an xml file so yeah that is how you actually migrate these two so XML to Compose and Compose to XML, which is actually very helpful to know, especially because right now there are so many XML projects out there that will be migrated to Compose like in, in near future, in the next years. So it's definitely good to know how you can actually do that. What's also very helpful to know is how you should actually learn Android and development in general. So if you're interested in my strategies that work for me really well, then you can simply click here to find that out.